Good afternoon and welcome once again to the weekly update with the mayor. We're in a little bit different uh, location today. First time in quite some time that we've done a remote. Um, and so where I'm standing is at the Richland Avenue pedestrian passageway because I wanted to make sure you have an idea as to how this project is coming along. And uh, we'll have an update um, after the weekly update and the coronavirus update with Kyle Johansson. Kyle, talk to us about the next seven days. So today you'll look for mostly sunny skies of a high of 73. Tonight, mostly clear, low of 57. Tomorrow, partly the mostly cloudy, slight chance of a rain shower, high of 69. Tomorrow night showers, low 42, chance of rain 40%. Friday, probably cloudy, a slight chance of a rain shower, high of 58. Friday night, mostly clear, low 33. Saturday, mostly sunny, high of 60. Saturday night, probably cloudy, low 41. Sunday, mostly cloudy, High of 67. Sunday night, mostly cloudy. Low of 44. Monday, partly cloudy. Slight chance of a rain shower. High of 68. Monday night, partly cloudy. Low of 48. Tuesday, partly cloudy. Slight chance of a rain shower. High of 69. Tuesday night, partly cloudy. Low of 50. And next Wednesday, partly cloudy for a high of 71 and a low of 52. So, so we're in that season where we're on the roller coaster ride. It's, uh, you know, warm to cold, you know, up and down, which is so typical. Uh, and to that point, something that I really, really feel is important to stress with everybody is to go and make sure you get your flu shot. Um, I went and got mine yesterday with Connie and my daughters, and I encourage you to get your flu shot too. In talking with, uh, with uh, uh, the people over at Holzer, over at um, uh, Shriver's, they had indicated that they are seeing numbers of people coming in to get a flu shot that they've not experienced before. And that's a good thing. So I can't stress that enough. You know, this is the season in which that weather is swinging up and down and the flu virus can sit there and certainly take hold and start to spread. And we really need for people to be extra cautious given that we're still under a global pandemic. To that point, Kyle, you wanna talk about some of the global pandemic numbers? So today in the state of Ohio, in the last 24 hours, there've been over 2000 new cases, 16 new deaths. United States nationwide, there are now over Eight, about 8 million cases, roughly over 220,000 dead. And global cases are now almost 39 million cases and roughly almost 1.1 million dead. And then here in Athens, Athens County, those numbers have just come out. We are currently looking at 1,073 total cases and 20 new positive cases today. Um, I think it's important to message out that what we're seeing by and large are a number of new cases coming in from on campus here at Ohio University in the residence halls. Uh, they've had several residence halls that are on full quarantine due to uh, COVID-19. Uh, but again, I, I will continue to remind people, you know, you've got to wear a face covering as I, myself and Ryan Schwartzoff are right now uh, as we're coming into your live feed. Wash your hands often. Also encouraging people uh, to think about going, if you're grocery shopping or having to get other sundries, do it in off times. Do it early in the morning uh, when there aren't a lot of people I believe Kroger still has an hour first thing in the morning when they open to where it's completely sanitized. And that is open for our senior citizens to do some grocery shopping as they uh, need to stock up and whatnot. And really do your best to avoid the weekends is what the, one of the things I'm constantly telling people to do is uh, 
avoid the crowded areas. You know, we all, we're in this together. We got to continue to message everything that we need to be doing as we migrate our way through this particular pandemic. So again, encouraging you all to mask up. Kyle, thank you as usual for uh, updating us on all things COVID-19 as well as the seven day outlook. So thank you, Kyle. You're welcome. So I've got a few items uh, to go through today. Um, we've talked a lot about hydrant flushing around the city, which is a normal thing that we do during the summer months to make sure that the fire hydrants are properly functioning and that we are able to flush them out the, uh, this next round of hydrant flushing is gonna be on Mulligan as well as Curtis. So make note, uh, if you see water flowing down Mulligan or Curtis, that, that's why. The, uh, uh, there'll be more update on this next week. North Court Street will experience the North Block. So from State Street to Carpenter, there will be a full street closing with detour signs uh, for two days and it's for uh, a, a project that's going on in that area. It's waterline related. So just note that that will be coming at us and we'll have more updates as we have the firm days in which that is gonna happen next week. Stimson Avenue, the Columbia Gas Project is still underway. They're currently migrating down Palmer. Uh, and on Palmer, they're between 22 and 28 Palmer. That'll be today. So just be cognizant that uh, there will be some detouring around there as well. It's always good to remind people about the HAPCAP mortgage and rent relief grant that's out there where people can apply for mortgage and rent relief. At this point in time, we've had seven people apply and receive uh, a little more than $6,000 in mortgage or rent relief so far. Also worth noting is that we also have the utility, the city utility relief program through HAPCAP again. Um, at this point in time, as I've been informed, we have had a couple calls on it, but nobody has applied for that. So again, if you can demonstrate that you've been impacted by COVID-19 uh, since March and you're behind in your utilities, you can certainly qualify for that particular program. Also, it's probably good to, to inform people that the city um, has purchased using the CARES Act um, a piece of equipment for our air handlers in the community center, in Arts West, in the city building, in both of our fire stations, as well as the law, law director's building, auditor building, police department. And these are um, bipolarizing ionizers, which are effective for removing COVID-19 particulate and other particulates from air circulating around through those spaces. So I think that's a, a, uh, especially important with the community center, uh, which is open to the public. Uh, and there are certain time frames when it's closed. It's closed between 12 and one for re-sanitizing. And then it is only open for a period of time, again, for our senior citizens so that they can experience it and not have to worry about COVID-19 while they are working out. Uh, so we've got these ionizers in a lot of places and hopefully that's gonna be very helpful as we move forward. Uh, another item that I've got, I wanna give a, a big thank you to a lot of people that worked really hard on the uh, flowering beautifications here in the city of Athens. If you came uptown this summer, uh, masked up I hope, you may have noticed that we have the, the hanging baskets were up and they were in full bloom and they did very well this summer, as well as the garden, the flower beds in front of the armory the city building, the Stimson Avenue roundabout looked beautiful this summer with the uh, petunias that were there, as well as the work that Project Plant does down at the island at the intersection of East State Street and 33. Um, so to that point, uh, Project Plant worked on that, but um, Roxanne Mele Brune um, and Art Strike, Chris Nisley, Kevin Skurlock with the city, Colton James, as well as uh, Dane Coger, and others, many others, um, worked tirelessly throughout this summer and even into the fall with making sure that those plants were being watered, being maintained, weeding that was going on. 
So again, a big thank you to everybody that was involved on making Athens um, a very beautiful place to come and frequent or visit this summer. The uh, couple other things I wanna share is that, you know, the city of Athens has more than 20 boards and commissions. And we're always looking for people wanting to volunteer to serve on the different boards and commissions. So I wanna point out a couple that uh, we're looking for people for the, through the mayor, uh, and you can reach out to me directly at 592-3338. Um, Athens area code, obviously, we've got three vacancies on the Joint Police Advisory Council. Um, one person who would serve in the all victims advocate or victims advocate world, uh, someone who's a community commuter, um, and someone who serves on one of the neighborhood associations. So I've got three vacancies there. Um, I have a new vacancy with the um, uh, Arts and Rec or, uh, Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. I've got someone who has not renewed um, because of, of uh, moving away. And so if so, anyone's interested in Parks and Rec, looking for someone to serve on that, and I believe city council still has some vacancies on the affordable housing commission, as well as the housing appeals board. For those two, you would reach out to, uh, to city council uh, and ask to be, um, that you're interested, that you would like to serve on one of those uh, boards or commissions. The last thing I have before we take a little walkabout down here at the Richland Avenue pedestrian passageway is the, uh, Ohio Academy of Sciences State Science Day 2020. Uh, that took place a little while ago. And what I wanna do is just briefly uh, with all the contestants, all the, the students that submitted their, their science projects to compete at the state level, I at least wanna briefly run down and recognize students from Athens who uh, um, competed, who participated in this. Um, Lisa, um, Lisa Louis uh, is one individual, um, Zoe Williams, Emerson Crowell, uh, Zinru uh, Han, as well as Helen Louis, uh, Eli McCarthy, Jake McCarthy, uh, Woon, uh, Jun Wu Park, Allegra Guglielmo, Michael Geist, Sophia Zelosi, and uh, Eliza Hartman. So we had a number of students uh, from here in Athens, well represented in Athens at the Ohio State Science Day. Uh, so again, props to all of them for for. <laughs> going up and participating and representing Athens. We're gonna go ahead and now take just a little bit of a walk about, uh, one of the first things I wanna show is, again, we're down at the Richland Avenue pedestrian passageway. This is a long plan project to deconflict Richland Avenue from the West Green, as well as uh, Baker Center. We're standing right next to Grover Center and Porter Hall is behind me. But right here, this is where you're the, we have a bus pull off, where the buses will pull in. We have a number of different buses. This happens for transit to other buses that run through the area. And this is where they will let individuals off. And over here, you'll see where the roadway itself is going through the paving process. I think that they currently have the base layer as well as the middle surface and then next week they will be doing the final surfacing the if you look at the crash rails the crash rails were designed to look like the oxbow bridge design so that we're consistent uh, with this particular project and now uh, ryan and i are now walking down past where they've landscaped the slope and re completely rebuilt the grade for what is, uh, what was Richland Avenue, still Richland Avenue, but uh, redoing the grade to afford for us to create a passageway
to where people can go, as I indicated, Baker Center, which is behind uh, or in front of me, behind you, uh, and the West Green, which is behind us. And they've re-landscaped, still doing some finishing work on this project. Uh, it's probably worth noting that uh, next week, October 19th, they will be doing the final pave, so be the surface coat of asphalt. Today they'll be striking all on wood. It all goes all that uh, Richland Avenue will finally be reopening by the 21st, if not sooner, and hopefully not later. Um, what you're looking at now is the passageway itself. What is going to be over in these two? gray concrete blank, blank spaces is the city's flag or the city's seal, if you will, and uh, Ohio University's seal. But this is the passageway. Um, and as we're walking through, one of the things I'd like to make note of as we're entering into this, um, and Ryan, if you can get a shot, we've got LED lighting throughout this whole thing. So this is all LED lighting. Um, it's kind of artistically placed around through the passageway and it's well lit at night here. And, it's, and the other thing that's interesting is the lighting can be programmed to where it's changing colors uh, on the 4th of July, it can be red, white, and blue during uh, other you know, holidays and whatnot that, that it's programmable to where we can change it. Ohio University football games or basketball games or whatever. It can be lit um, green and white. So, so this is the passageway. Um, and then it, again, it grades back on up here. And I am facing now West Green. Um, and you, as you can see, it's a nice wide open space. It's all ADA accessible the way they graded everything through here. So uh, it, as I said, it, is a great move to deconflict what was once a pretty hazardous intersection. You know, it was hazardous to pedestrians and cyclists, uh, and it was also an area where we were getting a lot of queuing of cars during class changes, uh, especially in a non-COVID time frame. And that, uh, you know, we will come back out of that someday to where we will see this campus. Uh, and all its vibrancy that is typical with lots of students commuting back and forth between classes and the West Green. So there you have it. Uh, stay tuned as to when we have a ribbon cutting at some point, and we will. It'll be virtual uh, to you, uh, and it'll be uh, uh, with just very few people here cutting a ribbon as we officially open up the roadway. Uh, but other than that, I'm going to say it again, I feel like a broken record, but that's okay, is please do everything that is in your own control to keep yourself safe uh, and to reduce any potential spread of the virus by wearing a mask, washing your hands frequently, social distance. And uh, again, you know, if you're going out and about to do shopping or whatever, you know, try to do it during times when you're not uh, at peak where you're going to be around a lot of other people. You know, uh, again, one of the few things that we can do, it's an inconvenience. I understand that, but it's also the way in which we can keep our community safe. Thanks again for joining me for the weekly update, City of Athens weekly update with the mayor. And uh, hopefully you'll join in again next week for the next update with the mayor. Take care.